Welcome to the Raspberry Pi Dramble video series. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can put the Raspbian operating system on these micro SD cards and then put them in your Raspberry Pis, boot the Pis, connect to the Pis, and get them configured and ready to go for the Raspberry Pi Dramble cluster. The first step is to take your micro SD card and put it in your computer. Now, for a size comparison, this is a normal SD card and this is a micro SD card. For my computer, I'm going to put the micro SD card in one of these adapters and then put it into my computer so that I can format the card and put the operating system on it. I've already gone to the Raspbian website on raspberrypi.org and downloaded Raspbian Jesse Lite. This is a minimal uh, operating system image built just for the Raspberry Pi uh, that's based on Debian Jesse. It doesn't have a GUI or anything like that, so it's a, a lightweight operating system you can load more quickly onto your card. Um, now you'll notice when I put in the card, it shows up on the desktop. Uh, the first thing that you'll want to do is you'll want to unmount or eject this disk using diskutil in the command line. So first I'm going to see what disk it is with diskutil list. And I can see here that there's a 32 gigabyte disk and that's this little micro SD card that I just put in. Um, it's a Samsung Evo Plus, and actually I have a ton of different micro SD cards. These are four of the cards I have, uh, but there's a SanDisk Extreme, the Samsung Pro Plus, SanDisk Ultra. There's a lot of different brands that I've tested and different types of each brand. I found that the Samsung 32 gig Evo Plus is the best uh, for price and performance. Usually you can find these for 10 or $15 on sale and they have the best random read and random write speeds of any of the cards that I've tested. Uh, so I've put it in, I know what the disk is, this is dev slash disk2, so I'm going to unmount the disk with diskutil unmount disk dev slash disk2. Now that it's unmounted, I can write the Raspbian Jesse light image to it. I'm using macOS 10, so I can say I can use the DD utility. You can do this also in Linux. Uh, there's other ways to write the card, but this is the fastest for me. And you give it an input file, which is the file you downloaded, expanded, a .img file. And you give it an output file, which is the disk that you're writing to. In my case on OS X, I can tell it uh, to use slash dev slash rdisk2 for a faster write. Uh, so I'm going to do that here. Uh, input file equals that image that I just downloaded and output file equals slash dev slash r disk two and then block size equals one meg. Uh, these are pretty standard settings and when you do this you also need to use sudo and I'll type in my password And now it's going to write that image file to the disk. Uh, now while it's writing, I'll also come back over here. Uh, you can see that I have the PyDramble over here. It's not turned on yet, but I do have all the network jacks plugged in. It's plugged into my network right now. The, the uh, network switch is plugged into my home network, so you can see that there's a port with some activity on it. And then uh, I do this for each card. I put the system on it, and then you put the cards into the slot like this. And at this point, you're ready to boot your Pies, and they'll start communicating over the network. So I'm going to wait for that copy to finish. And you can also do Control T on your keyboard uh, to show progress. So you can see that this much has been transferred uh, at a rate of about, I think this is 20 or 30 megabytes per second. And now it says it finished. So now after it finishes, you'll see it appear on your desktop again. You can eject the card. And once it ejects, then I can take the card out of my computer and put it into the Raspberry Pi. So now that I've done that, I'm going to boot up all the Raspberry Pis by plugging in this USB power supply. And at this point, I need to find out the IP addresses that my network is assigning to all these Raspberry Pis. And then I need to find out their MAC addresses. That's the physical address of the network jack on each Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to map those together so that I can build my infrastructure using IP addresses that I control. 
There's a lot of different ways you could do this step, uh, but the way that I normally do it is I use uh, a program called Thing, which lets me see all the devices on my network and match them to MAC addresses. Uh, so I have instructions for this on the PyDramble website uh, for how to prepare your Raspberry Pis. And if I go to the Thingbox website, you can download Thing for OS X, for Windows, Linux. You can even run it on a, another Raspberry Pi if you have another Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can also load it on your phone so you can see all the devices on your network. Uh, so once all these Raspberry Pis are booted up, you'll see that the, uh, the little green lights on them blink every now and then. That just is basically showing a little bit of activity. Uh, and you can also look on the back. You can see the, the lights on the, the network jacks showing that the network is connected. And you can see on the front here that there's communication happening on my switch. Once that's all done, I can run the command thing, and then I give it my network prefix. So in my case, it's 10.0.1.1. It might be 192.168.1.1, or whatever it is for your local network, slash 24. And I also need to pass sudo so that it has the proper admin rights. And it's going to look at all the devices on my network, and it'll give me a table of all the different devices it sees on my network. And if I scroll up, you can even see uh, the device maker on some of them. So in, in this case, with all the Raspberry Pi uh, computers, it spits out this little string here so that I know these are Raspberry Pis. And I already know that this Raspberry Pi is the is another Pi on my network that's performing some other action. Uh, but it looks like these are the actual Raspberry Pis that just booted up here. And so I can test this by copying one of these IP addresses and logging into it with SSH. Pi at that IP address, Raspberry. And now if I type on my keyboard, you'll notice that one of these lights blinks. You might not be able to see that in the video, but the number three light is blinking very rapidly as I'm typing, so I know that I'm connected to that Pi. So I'm going to exit this, and now at this point I know that there's 16, 17, 19, 18, those are reversed, 20. These are my five Raspberry Pis and their MAC addresses. And the next step that I need to do is I need to go to my configuration over under the, uh, the wiki here. I need to go to my configuration for the networking, and I need to map the uh, Pi IP addresses to their MAC addresses. Uh, I'm going to cover that step and basically the, the initial network configuration and connection in the next video. The last thing I'm going to do in this video is show you the steps to get the Pi itself prepared in terms of getting the micro SD card completed. Uh, so for each Pi, you want to log in. and then run sudo raspy config and expand the file system. And if you want, you can also change the password on each Pi. And then finish and reboot it. And now whichever Pi that one was uh, will reboot itself. I think it was maybe this one. So after it reboots, now it's ready for the networking configuration to be added. Um, another thing that you will want to do at some point, you don't have to do this yet, but uh, you can do it now or later, is you need to add your own SSH key uh, to each Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to uh, cover that more in depth later, and I'll also have more information about that on the Pi Dramble site. Uh, but I usually use a program called SSH Copy ID. And that will automatically copy my identity file. So if I say identity file.ssh uh, id rsa.pub, that's my public key that will let me authenticate to other computers. I can tell it to copy that to pi at 10.0.1.16. And when I do that, it'll ask me for my password. And, oops. I just updated the password. And now it says that it added the key, so I can say ssh pi at 10.0.1.16, and it should log me in without asking for my password. And it does. Uh, so now the, that pi is all ready to go, and I'll do the same thing for all the other pies, 17, 18, 19, and 20. 
Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe if you want to keep seeing more videos about the Raspberry Pi Dramble and other Ansible related topics. Um, I'm going to be doing another video soon on networking, and then there will be some more videos down the line on using Ansible to provision all the different software on the servers, and then running Drupal on the servers and doing some benchmarks and tests.